So I'm Brad Levitt, president of AFT Construction. Thank you for tuning into our channel today. We're gonna to be speaking about closed cell and open cell foam, uh, what we use in Arizona and the purpose behind it. So we're out here in our Saguaro Grove project. You can see behind me, we're actually in the dining room. This would be a formal dining room. And our clients, this would be a very uh, important place for them, a gathering place. You can see behind me, this is actually gonna be uh, the wine wall. It's gonna be a decorative wine wall. So you have, um, you can see the soffits built out. This is gonna be air conditioned space because you know air wine cellars are typically 55 degrees or cooler. So this will have a dedicated unit and we're gonna have a glass wall right here. So this glass wall, uh, will, will be a feature wall. So you're gonna have all the racking and it's gonna be this amazing showpiece of the dining room. But until we get to that point at the finish stage, we're here at the rough stage. And you can see behind me the spray foam and this is actually open cell spray foam. There, there's a difference there, you know, open cell is a little lighter as far as when you think of something more dense and that's closed cell, closed cell is more dense. When you think of building science techniques um, that we've got into in other videos, you can see here, this is a standard 16 inches on center. Now, when you get into a building science home on a wood frame, ideally you do what's called advanced framing. That goes to 24 inches on center in lieu of 16, so you have 24 inches. A lot of times you'll use closed cell because there's some structural components to closed cell. That helps with the structural uh, element of the house when you have the spacing at 24 inches, which will create that different envelope. However, with our climate in Arizona, Open cell is what uh, we typically do. Um, and, and one of the benefits too is not only our exterior walls are open cell foam, but we also do the attic deck. So when you think of the attic here in Arizona, it's very hot, right? So in the summer, the attics can typically get, you know, 130, 140, 150 degrees very easily. They're super hot. It's very inefficient when you have your mechanical equipment, because most of our mechanical equipment are air handlers. You know, our duct work is there in the attic running down into the house. So it's very inefficient to be having cool air created in 140 degree temperature and then pumped through into the house. So the way around that is to use um, open cell foam as we've done here and on the roof deck. So on the top of the roof, you put in that open cell foam. And then now the air conditioned space of the attic is typically the same temperature as the rest of the house. So if the house is at 80 degrees, that attic is typically 80 to 82, um, which is a, a much more um, beneficial climate for the equipment. So now the equipment's in a cooler area, you know, the ductwork is blowing chilled air in a controlled environment, a controlled space, and it's super beneficial. That's why most of the homes, at least the luxury homes, or homes that are looking to have a better uh, envelope, are gonna have open cell foam on the exterior walls and the roof deck itself. So now you're creating that tight envelope. Now in the older homes of Phoenix, you're gonna see that you crawl into the attic and it's super hot and you have um, bad insulation or cellulose and you're trying to run that duct work you know, through there, it's super inefficient. So there's a lot of air gaps and leaks and you lose a lot of value. So that's why it's really important to do the open cell go with spray foam, um, which is a great solution for our climate here in the desert. Thank you for watching our channel. If you made it to this point, hopefully the content we're putting out is really engaging. Make sure to give us a like. If you have any questions or comments or topics you want us to address, make sure and let us know in the comments or reach out to us and we'll be happy to address those in future videos. So one of the questions that we've had from not only um, our viewers, but also the client themselves was, Look at a wall uh, such as this one. You have our spray foam and then you have bats. And so, and, and you'll see this here down this hallway. Right now we're in the process of installing drywall. Everyone knows this is the messiest phase of construction. You know, as we're cutting drywall, hanging it uh, before we scrap and clean the house. Now, what you have is anytime you have an exterior wall. So anytime that you have the outside element to the interior, you have to have spray foam. This is gonna create that thermal break. It's gonna create that insulation from the outside, whether it be the winter cold temperatures or the summer hot temperatures. So the outside to inside has to have spray foam. Now, on the interior walls, we do bats. You know, and typically this is installed for sound. So right here, you know, this is a gap right here in the wall because uh, you have the hallway here. So this is a sound bat to give the, the master bedroom privacy. You'll see that here, all the interior walls for the bathrooms and the bedrooms and the laundry room are all insulated so that you have sound protection, uh, which is really important for most of the clients. I mean, if someone's using the restroom, ideally it's soundproofed, um, especially if you have guests over. So 
depending on the finishes you do, the acoustics is really important. So all those, um, all the bats are installed for sound walls.